when I think about like stories like that, I oftentimes go back to when I was, when I was a school teacher, I taught for about five years in Wisconsin before moving um, and focusing more on my career and uh, my running career. And, and I remember when I was teaching, one of the first things I kind of thought of was just like, you know, you'd have a variety of students, you have the students that have like perfect home lives and they had all the kind of the setup there to be successful and they still had to work hard and, and mm -hmm. do the right things. Um, but, you know, there was a lot more of a kind of a, of a, of a guide there, or there are multiple adults in their lives that were there to really kind of help point them in the right direction, or at least give them um, pointers as to which way to choose. And then you had students who, uh, it, like, you know, their home life was not good. And, uh, you know, they, they were maybe one mistake away from, you know, ruining a huge portion of their life or making a really big uphill battle for themselves. And, and a lot of times the difference between those students finding a way and not was what were they doing from three o'clock until, you know, maybe nine or 10 o'clock yeah. in the afternoon when school closed and, you know, their, their parents were maybe coming back from work late or something like that. So to hear you talk about just like that structure that your mom put in place for your life, not only in the sense that she had the community with the church and the YMCA to, to help out, but also creating that example for you is, you know, you, when you see that as a teacher, you think like, you know, those are the, those are the heroes out there, the, the unseen heroes are the people like your mom. Yeah. And, and it's just, you know, look, I do a lot of inner city work and, and, you know, one of the big factors that I always look at in the inner city is, you know, the lack of education. And, and I've been so hyper-focused on that, just education, educating, educa educating the kids, but that, you know, for the longest time, I've been missing the point. Through the process, you, you have to educate not only the, the kids, but the parents, mm -hmm. you know, just to be a parent, just, just show up, support, maybe, you know, get a diet. Like a lot of these kids don't even, they go to school, Zach, and, and they don't eat. Mm -hmm. There's no fuel. And, and, and some of the things that, that you know, we're missing in, in, in as far as is helping the inner city, yeah, education is big, but it's also an educational process to, for moms and dads. You know, I'm, all, I'm big on, hey, if you're a dad, you know, be responsible. Be responsible. Be in your child's life. If you're, if you're a mom, be responsible. Be in your child's life. And, and I think there's a lot of cyclical issues within the inner city that, that have to be fixed in order for the kids to get to the education side of things and and you know I, I you know thank god i had some of my mother in my life at a young age who showed me that direction she showed me she held my hand and held her kids hands through the process and even though we had late night homework she got it done we figured out a way to get it done and she was a part of that so you know i, I there's you know look i can go on and on and on you know i've, I've been involved again in the inner city and and, and in planning and trying to um, be a mentor in, in so many ways, but there is just so many issues that we, we, we really have to deal with. And I think it's up to us as people just to go back and give and like just to serve. Yeah, that's really powerful. I think, um, I think like what you say and uh, you're practicing what you preach, essentially, you knew what you knew what it took to kind of get you to where you were. And you recognize there's a path like that for probably a lot of other kids that, you know, that, that they may not find that if they don't have help from someone like yourself or, yeah. or, you know, have, have some options other than, you know, a gang or wherever they could end up if they're not left with a whole lot of choices. So, yeah, yeah so true. And you know what, and to go on that, Zach, look, I, I'll say this. I, I've never accomplished anything in my life without someone else helping me. I, I, I've never done one thing in my life, not one accomplishment that I did, by, that I did alone. I can say I deserve all the credit. There's not, not one thing. And I'll apply that coming out of high school and going into college. And when I first got into college at Arizona State, I was a young man who was raised by his mom, a single mom. And it took me to get into college to know what a man really was. And that man was Lovey Smith, who was my position coach, who's the head coach of the of University of Illinois now. But he was my position coach at Arizona State, taught me how to be a man. There's one thing to know, have some discipline on the way your mom, my mother had raised me. But then when it was a strong man with a strong presence, it was different. He taught me how to be a man. He taught me how the little nuances, not just opening doors, but the little nuances of how to treat people and have respect. And those are some of the things I, like the little things that I didn't know. And it took Lovey Smith to get me there. So it's the same thing in the inner city. When I go back 
it's my duty to pour into these kids like like Lovey Smith poured into me and just show them some of the little things that they're single, they're from a single parent or they don't have a father or a figure. Just show them just a piece of you that's disciplined. So, I, you know, I mean, I know I'll go on all day, Zach, but you know, <laughs> as you know, that's where my heart lies. I mean, I just want to give so much. There's so much more of me to give. Mm-hmm.